so we can break about the hit me if i seem a little unimpressed with this an anti-social pessimist but usually i don't mess with this and i know hey friends welcome back again for the new tips and tricks video of power bi mash class series now this time we will create a burn down chart here in power bi so this is for all the project managers which is out there uh, so maybe you have use case for that creating a burn down chart you will see how we can create a burn down chart in power bi so let's explore this so we have a project managers uh, sheet here data set you can also download this file from the description below so let's uh, import our data from excel and i'll select my file here sprint file i'll click on open here i'll select my pm file so this means project managers uh, data set and you can see we got date and sprint and hours here and uh, of course uh, uh, employees need to have some hours to complete the task so we have total 300 hours so we need to complete our project that is power bi implementation project uh, within uh, 31 days maybe yeah within 30 days so we need to complete that so if we uh, multiply if we divide that that is we have total 300 hours that is divided by 10 so optimally we get uh, 10 hours a day so we have 10 hours uh, to complete uh, for each day we need to we have 10 hours slotted for completing our task our project so you can see uh, here of course we got the burn down here so you can see we got 10 hours burn down and here we got 276 so uh, this uh, and here we got 260 245 so this is not 10 hours burn down for each each days here and of course here what we need to do is we need to calculate where our deviation is happening and we need to calculate the optimum line to complete our task within the 30 days and here you can see here we got the day the project is not completed yet because we have null values for the remaining days after the 20 day so that means uh, uh, the project is not completed yet we need to complete that also so what i'll do i'll click on load here and let's wait a second here now let's let's see here we got the date and the hours and sprint here of course we need to use a date uh, date table here because we have time intelligence column here that is date column so we will need to create that so we have a uh, time stream uh, for this we have uh, january to january end so instead of using the whole date table what i'll do i'll use uh, date table functions so we have calendar and calendar order functions to create uh, our table here so what i'll do i'll click on modeling here and you can see we got the new measures quick measures new column and new table here uh, when i click on new table here you will uh, we can create a table here uh, so make sure that uh, we can't use this calendar and uh, calendar order function to create a measure here using that because this calendar and calendar order functions index uh, that is used to create a table so i'll click on new table here so let's rename this to let's say calendar calendar and i'll use calendar function calendar function and here we need to provide a start date and end date here i'll say i'll, I'll say my start date is 2021 starting month is first month starting from the first day and for the end date i'll again use date function here and i'll say 2021 01 31st day so we will get a 30 days time frame for the january month here let's uh, hit enter here now, of course we need to uh, create relationship between this we need to connect these two tables here what i'll do i'll go to this model view and i'll adjust this to this side and this to this side so i'll connect this using our date here date field i'll just simply drag it here and drop it here 
I can see we got the cardinal D ratio is one to one and cross filter direction is both. I'll save this. So you can see we got one to one cardinal D ratio and we got the both directional cross filter directions here. So uh, why I'm connecting this dates table with this because uh, for the particular day, uh, we, uh, if, if we have uh, a more than one field, so uh, to make sure to get a unique fields here. So I use this calendar functions. What I'll do now, I'll go to this report view and let's uh, add our data to our visual. So let's add line chart here and let's, let's add some fields here. Let's add date field here from the PM table and let's add the hours here. So what I'll do instead of getting the date in a hierarchy way, I'll just say date. I can see we got the project management uh, visuals here. Like you can see here, we got the 300 starting from the 300 hours we have and the day wise day, the burn down is decreasing here. So you can see here and of course we have some deviations here. We need to calculate that. What I'll do, I'll uh, I want here the optimum line that is the optimum line within this particular time frame of project. I need to calculate that. So let's use some DAX functions to calculate that. So what I'll do, I'll just right click on this and create a new measure here. And I'll call this my measure as optimum, let's say optimum, optimum line. Optimum line. I'll, I'll go to the new line here and I'll say I'll create some variables here. You can also create uh, separately variables uh, that is uh, separately creating a measures here. So you can use that also. So what I'll do, I'll create a measure, uh, my new variable that is uh, start date here. Start date. So here. I'll use calculate function because I need to modify the filter context here. That's why I'll be using the calculate function here. So what I want is I want the date here. Sorry, I want the, yeah, I want the starting date. So I'll use first date function here to get the first date of the record. So you can see here it says returns the first non-blank date. So it returns the first date from the date that is from the PM date, project management date here. So I'll get uh, zero, uh, that is uh, January 1st. For the filter expression, what I'll do, I'll use all selected function. So what it does means it will remove any extra, uh, any filters which is applied within the query. So it will remove that and, will, and it will, uh, what it does, it will keep the filters that comes from the outside. So it will, it will keep that. So that's why, that's what we want here. And here I'll say PM, this table. And this is my start date. And again, I'll need to use another variable that is, let's say, uh, so we got the start date. So I'll say day since. So I'll say day since. Day since. And here what I'll do, I'll calculate the date difference between the start date and the max update. So I'll use date difference function here. And for the date one, I'll provide my start date here. And for the date two, I'll use max of the date that is my calendar state date. So I'll get the unique max of date from that by day wise. I want this by day wise. So I'll set day. So this is my day difference that is my day since. So again, I'll use again another variable that is, uh, let's say beginning hours, beginning, let's say just begin hours, begin H. So I will got the beginning hours. So here I'll say, again, use calculate function. So what I want is I want the max of hours, max of hours by filtering the expression called Again, I'll use all selected and I'll filter the PM table. So again, what I need to do is, uh, yeah, here we need to calculate the length here. 
that is uh, 30 days so i'll use length here th so we got 30 days that will just say 30 then i'll of course we need to return something here i'll use return here and here i'll use if function here and i'll say for the logic test i'll say if the max of this calendar date that we have if this date if this is greater than or equal to the start date that we have so we got the start date yeah and this max of this calendar date again this date if this is so it will check for each row so it will check and it uh, max of calendar date if this is less than or equal to what if this is less than or equal to my start date and the length that we have so it will uh, it will do what it does it will check uh, if the date is per, in the time frame or not so here i need to use length here plus length yeah so we got this if that true if the if the date is per, in the particular time frame that is in 30 days time frame then what to do then do beginning of hours subtract that within the uh, with the sorry with the days since so this day since what it does it will return the days remaining that is multiplied by the what the beginning hours that we have 300 hours divided by the length this length so 300 by 30 we got the 10 if that true if it is false then just draw it black so what we done is we just uh, calculated some variables here we use the start date here so we got uh, this using the calculate function so we'll say first date functions so it will return the 0 1 by the filter expression all selected so it will keep the external filter external filters and remove the uh, filters with uh, which is applied within the query so it will check that and we got the day since functions the day since uh, it is calculated using the date difference so we say the start date if it is uh, first date first january so first january minus uh, max of uh, date first january minus the 31st date so it will be 30 days difference and the beginning hours we got 300 hours the max of hours means 300 hours then the length here so we have 300 uh, 30 days length and here we will check if the date is in the particular time time frame or not then what to do then uh, subtract the beginning hours with the days then multiply that with the beginning hours divided by length else what blank just i'll hit enter here and let's add this to our visual here select this and let's add this here now you can see here we got a straight line here that is my optimum line you can see here so here we got this 300 hours so what i'll do i'll just change the format of this i'll change this to whole number here yeah here you can see we got the optimum 300 years starting and here we got 290 so it is fine and here you can see the burn down is happening and we got 14 hours we are here we are lagging here by four hours and here you can see we are lagging here by 15 hours maybe yeah you can see yeah, here you can see uh, the sum of hours we have 90, 90 hours so we made nine so this is my 90 so this is my 90 hours and optimum line was 110 hours so of course so that means uh, we need to work faster to complete our task here or we need to add uh, more working hours to complete the task now you can see so this is uh, uh, this is how we can create a burn down chart in power bi hope you enjoyed in this video hope you understand something in this video stay tuned for the next video thank you